We do have a quorum. Everybody had an opportunity to review the minutes from last minutes board meeting? Yes. So do we have any changes? No. Motion to approve. Make motion to approve. First, I hear second. I hear second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Carries, minutes are approved. New business, youth leagues. Who wants to go first? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> we invited the youth leagues here. Um, we have Pee Wee, Little League, and uh, Junior Football all here. Um, who wants to? All right. Danville Pee Wee Baseball. Um, I guess what we're supposed to do is kind of give an overview of last season and, and talk about coming up. Last year in our ages 4, 5, 6, and 7, we had 243 registered kids. Uh, that made uh, 16 teams that we... Uh, had a lot of fun playing. And as always, our our goals, just as they have been for as long as I've been around, is that our, our we try to get the kids to love the game, to have them enjoy what they do, learn some skills, and then that way they're ready to move on to either Little League or softball, whatever they decide to do. And um, I think um, everyone seems to have a good time. We, uh, I know I do, and so it has a, we have a, Another good season planned. Registration's open right now, and hopefully we'll be finishing up by the end of February. And then always, you know, many calls after that to people that just, just, just didn't see that sign anywhere on there. So um, anyway, so we'll, we'll do that. But um, as I tell folks, it's never too late to sign up for Pee Wee Baseball. So we'll, we'll get them in one or the other. Um, as far as um, needs, as always, Dirt, and I did. Yeah, I did talk. Yeah, um, I did talk to the whoever's in charge of the, the the senior center being built out there by Walmart, or I guess farther out by uh, there. The the whole big. Oh, the senior housing. Yeah, senior housing. And asked if he had any dirt that he wanted to get rid of close by. He said, "I will in the spring." So if you don't mind, I'll get that worked out. I don't know what he means by spring because he said it was just it was just too wet for them right now to get in and, and dig. But um, if that's workable, I'll try to maneuver what I can to get down there and then just try to get that worked on if that's if that's agreeable. And you can think on it. Oh, go ahead. Well, that's what I was going to say, and that may have such the clay soil we have. Well, it's okay on the one field because that's what it is, but the other field is better shape. Sift it before they give it to us. But dirt is very expensive because we spent probably five grand just on the two fields last year and barely. Yeah, I figured, you know, if, again, with what rocks we deal with on a game by game basis, if I can get some dirt, I'll try to work out a way to, to you know, sift that through. So, yeah, we'll, we'll talk. Okay. Um, from that point, you know, really nothing. I know you probably have plans on that one backstop to get it repaired yeah, on, on two. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or practice till probably the first week of April. Yeah, so um, good shape there. Um, and again, that outside of that, I'm, I'm okay. okay I, and I would be remiss if I didn't thank the park staff and the park board for any help they had in, in naming Brent Pope Field. It was, uh, you know, certainly a surprise when I got that phone call, and I still don't know if I deserve that or not. But I am, uh, I'm very appreciative of, of that, and, and I have a great time at the always always have and I hope I always will thank you all very much any questions that you might have no I a comment um you do deserve that title you deserve that field named you have touched so many lives in this community Brent for oh, I don't know how many time, years you've been doing this how many years now 31 31 mm -hmm. I think you do deserve that title on that field well, um because you. you do it so well and you do it tirelessly and I don't know how you have the energy and so I want to thank you for doing it because you've affected my, my children and my grandchildren. Yeah. 
So that's what keeps me going. Those yeah. smiles and just the fact that you know to get down there and hear the laughs. You know, the guys here also acknowledge that the, the laughs and the smiles of kids of that age. You just you just can't put a price on it, and that's what brings keeps me coming back. Well, thank you. Thank you. Who's next? <laughs> Hello, I'm J.R. Hackleman with the Danville Junior Football League. Um, I missed all these meetings before, so this is my first time. So I didn't even know what I, I didn't even know what I was here for. But, <laughs> but no, uh, I, no, we're, we're, we enjoy being in the park, and we're, we feel fortunate to have the park as our home. Um, we're in a Sagamore conference, so we play other schools, so we see what the other people are doing as well, and some of them. Or have to play on the on the school fields, which can be nice, but also cannot be so nice because they don't necessarily have access to the concession stands and stuff like that, like what we do in the park. So that works out well for us. Um, past this past year, we had 200 and probably around 215 kids between the football and the cheerleading. Um, that breaks into cheerleading was about 75, and football was about uh, 140 ish, or right around there. But uh, we had uh, we had really good seasons this last year. We had teams for football that were in the Sagamore Conference Championship game in all three age groups. So that was good. Sixth grade in the majors won. Right. So uh, it was a good a good season. And we practiced for the first time up on top at Gary Aiken, which was great. Uh, a nice open space that we eventually, hopefully, will move up there. We've uh, talked to you guys. I guess not you guys, but I've talked to Will and seen <laughs> visions. So uh, we're working towards that. We've, we raised, last year's first year that we really did some fundraisers that put some money a way that hopefully we can help some ways in doing that. We purchased some equipment as well. And then uh, I talked to Will also about maybe trying to help in the community raising higher dollar amounts that would go a little further for that. Needs. I don't think that we are in need of anything, really. <laughs> it's for a long way off, so. <laughs> prior to the planning stages <laughs> you know when when season's here you guys keep the grass mowed and you know we, we play football so we enjoy that so that's that's really all I've got you guys have any questions for the football league or anything so is attendance going up or? Last, year, last year went up cheerleading was the biggest uh, factor in that though cheerleading went I think had gone down, and then we took, the, then it joined up. And that first year that it joined, the numbers were pretty bad. And then, I mean, cheerleading doubled last year from what it was the year before. And then football went up slightly. We went up, I don't know, we went up about 12 kids, which in a lot, but that's still with 100, I mean, yeah, with 120 kids, that's, a, that's still nearly 10%. So, uh, we feel good about that. I think that the numbers will continue to go up. I'd like to, which I know I talked to Nate a little bit about maybe seeing, getting some some flag opportunities or something going down there. Recently, um, we were at a conference and there's an, a company that that's what they do uh, for young kids. So we thought that like maybe we'd reach out to you guys about the possibility of teaming up you know you you have the people <laughs> we have the program <laughs> you know we team up and make it a feeder for you guys well, because it's easy for us I'd like to do you know maybe a short flag session before before football just for kids that don't know whether football is something that they'd like to do or not just kind of to get them out there so that they can see what we do and and whether they like it, you know. So those are things that we're looking at. Uh, 
injury wise, I mean, people always ask about football. But last year we did have, we had our very first game, we had a kid that got hurt. And that was a bad way to start the season, but he was okay. I mean, he came back and he was fine, but uh, he was our, really our, about our own. Question scare that I know of was that first game. Other than that, we've been aerating, seeding, and spraying yeah, pretty consistently. Okay. Um, so, have you noticed any difference in it at well, all? Well, last year we had a good uh, rainy. That yeah, kind of helped. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, the year before that, it was like concrete yeah, down there. Exactly. The the year before, so. Uh, if you're doing that, you know, I, I know, like I said, last year wasn't a real good judge because we had rain almost every day. Put more in. Stay off of it during the season practice so that we're not throwing all the grass. At some point, I'd like to get up and take out. Good job on the Sagamore games. Oh, thanks. The Sagamore teams. If I'm here in 30 years, I want a, I want a field name. Left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making the note right now, JR. I'm writing it down. It's in the minutes. We're going to put it in the, yeah, put it in the minutes. If JR's here in 30 years, he gets a field. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, Chris Chiotto, Danville Little League. Um, we have current uh, registration going on right now, about, about, about two months now, a little bit over two months that we've been going. Um, our numbers from last year, uh, we ended up with 306 total kids throughout, um, that's ages four through 16. Um, there were, we had four teams in our littlest division. Uh, the most teams we had were in our uh, AAA major division. We had six teams in both of those divisions, um, and those range from uh, ages 9 through 12. In 10-year-old division and in the 11 and 12-year-old division. Right now, we're sitting at about 60% of registration numbers from last year, which is about, about average. We see a spike here in the yeah. last two weeks. Basketball's over. People are starting to, you know, the baseball stuff's going, so now they're ready to start. That last week push. Yeah, yeah. That, that last push. So, I mean, I'm anticipating that we'll probably be right in the same in the same ballpark, maybe a little bit less, um, just because the numbers do fluctuate. Uh, you have bigger classes that that age out, and then you know smaller classes behind them. So it's usually roughly right around there. Um, you know, as far as this season, you know we've got we've got a lot planned uh, for this season. Um, you know, we start our player evaluations and and drafting uh, starting March seventh. Um, the practices will begin uh, Saturday the 14th. We'll start practicing. The teams can start practicing at that point in time. Um, the regular season opening day of games will be Saturday, April the 18th. That'll be our opening day. Uh, in years past, we, uh, we would do kind of an opening day parade type situation on that. Uh, we changed it up last year and we went to more of a, a jamboree. Uh, the week before that, which we're going to do again this year, um, which I, I know I put an email to you. Yeah. The 11th, correct. That's Saturday. Yep. Um, we're going to do it again um, over uh, where the football field is, using the, the football tower, uh, the tower and things like that. And it's fun for everyone to come over. Uh, we have bouncy houses, games. Uh, we do uh, events for each team, and then we kind of have a winner for each division. Uh, so it's fun for the kids. And then some, uh, some we use it as a fundraising uh, aspect too, because it's some of it, it's paid paid to play, so to speak. So like the bouncy houses and the speed pitch and uh, some other things that we'll have, uh, you know, a ticket is like a dollar. So we use that to kind of raise money for uh, for the league as well. And it turned out it turned out really well for us last year. We're looking at doing that again uh, this year. Um, <clears throat> we have. Uh, Season goes through the end of June. Um, last year, um, we had a really succe successful year last year um, during the regular season. Uh, all the teams had, had a great time, uh, you know, 
It was a tough season last year, uh, weather-wise. A uh, lot of rain last year, so a lot of teams were playing back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games, which was tough. But we made it through, um, and uh, you know we put four teams in the district all-stars last year. So we had a nine-year-old team, a nine, ten, eleven, and twelve-year-old team, and they all placed very respectfully. Um, our nine-year-old team, so the youngest of the bunch, so they play in a, in a eight-year-old, nine-year-old, and ten-year-old division. Our nine-year-olds placed sixth out of fifteen teams. Um, our ten-year-old team actually placed second Very out good. of fifteen teams. Um, our eleven-year-old team also placed second out of seven teams. It's a smaller. That's a smaller division. Um, it's usually made up of just eleven-year-olds. And then our major division team. Um, which is our mix of 11 and 12 year olds, uh, placed fourth out of nine teams. We hosted that uh, that tournament here, uh, which was which was uh, which was fun. It's a lot of work, but it, it was it was fun. They're uh, looking at us again to host that again this year. We'll see if that that would be usually the week right after the Fourth of July. Um, three. As far as needs uh, for this year, uh, we've got a few things that, uh, you know, much like Brett knows, you know, field, I've got to get my numbers down here. Hold on, field six, right, yeah. um, which needs some work because that's yeah. it just, we'll it doesn't drain. Right yeah, I know we, talk, we had talked about yeah. that. It just doesn't drain, uh, you know. The Barnett field, we had talked about some drainage there. Yeah, that's the other thing. With Barnett Field, we, we really want to do field renovations to that because the grass has really starting, started to get, the infield, I should say, uh, really beat up. Um, and what happens is when it rains, I remember I think I sent you that video yeah, the one time, it yeah, comes down from that little hill from the pool, down the street, through the, uh, through the gravel, and then just floods the infield. Um, I've had a few people come out and, and take a look at it and just kind of give me their their opinion on what they think needs to be done and no one will really touch the field until we get some type of drainage because it's just yeah it's going to do the same thing if we, mm -hmm. we do that so what they've if it's possible to do some type of drainage just along that area kind of outside so that because you get all the roof water too from the, really kind of just dips that way we talked about scraping a ditch to send it down third baseline an option we can we can work on that the hard part will be like season so yeah it's yeah it's something um, I mean obviously you know it's too late now like with the season right here to yeah. do renovations would probably something you know, we so look at in seasons yeah. yeah there's a we do have a trencher so we could possibly shoot something down there as long as nothing's in the ground I don't think Fibers on the other side, so. Touch that fiber. <laughs> don't touch the fiber. Yeah, it's on the other side of the road. <laughs> I don't, not, I don't, not aware of anything that's that's in the ground now. That should be fine. But yeah, there's a, there's a window of, you know, you're looking mid July to, you know, mid August, end of August before we start up our yes, our fall ball season. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just it's just you know over the years I mean it's it's just taken a beating from the rain um, yeah it is what it is um, I mean it wasn't really until this year that I really noticed that it was the rain rushing in from the uh, street and down off the hill that was causing all the all the issues so it just floods the grass and then takes all the dirt and pushes it around and yeah it should be mother nature uh, but that's you know, field six and Barnett are pretty, the, probably the top two. Um, the, the other fields, they do a decent job. You know, a little bit of, of conditioning agent when it rains, and they're pretty fixable pretty quickly. So, um, we are going to put a number on Barnett. We just didn't know. We're still working on where we're going to put it. Yeah. Probably will be the best spot would be on the concession stand because then you can see it from both sides. Yeah. I think we're going to put it there. We had talked about that. So, 
Um, and yeah, I mean, as far as needs, those are the, the, the two big ones. The other one that I had uh, put in my email the other week was just the, uh, the base inserts on like field five, I think five and six actually, of the orange inserts. They're, yeah. ju they're just jammed in there. They're not broken off. They're just, they're wedged into the insert and you can't get them out. A couple of them now are just warped from the weather. Going back, probably. so the you get whatever base you have. That bottom part, we'll put it in for you. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we have the bases. We'll get the bases and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. But those orange inserts they sit in there. And I don't know if they're just rusted together or what. It, yeah, and we've tried to we tried to pull them out, but we're almost pulling up the whole entire concrete. So. That to, we've had to do that a couple of times. <laughs> Just solves it from trying to wiggle them in there. And, you know, there's player safety in that, too. You know, if it wiggles and somebody's sliding. Exactly. Um, inserts on second base, you said? I believe it's, I believe it's second and third on field five. Um, and then on field six. It may be first and third. So, and that um, that's really about uh, about it. Um, questions for me? Right, so, Chris, we have something that we've been wanting to try for a long time. Oh. Go ahead. But we're kind of reasonable this year. We're going to take the wind. Cash cans that we have. But also in that process, we know that your guys' needs are a little bit more than the average. We were going to buy these like temporary structures for you guys and give you trash bags. Not buy trash bags for you. So, trash bags? Every type of soft one. <laughs> but um, what we're looking at is just, it's not going to be the recycling version, it'll be the regular version. And our goal is to remove the trash right away. We've had a lot of issues with animals and stuff getting in the trash. And Hoping that if we give you, you guys tell us how many you want, how many trash bags you want, we'll stock you, and your job is to just get them and dump them in the dump. It should be fairly easy. We'll get you the good stuff. That's funny. <laughs> 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 ours are a lot of glasses. But uh, we, we do want to invest in it, and it's something that really we've always wanted to do. Sorry. But uh, we want to minimize any weeds. We got six guys every morning spending two hours just picking up trash. Our goal is minimize the amount of trash cans. No, it's not going to be good. Uh, but the goal is if we can train the public a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, we have, we're going to put some in the hot areas like play skate or basketball. Uh, we're even talking packing. Or one of our biggest problems is they just have all kinds of stuff just all over chicken. And then we're bringing in the animals. <laughs> Start to eat off our stuff. We just had one that uh, euthanized yesterday. Catchy side. So if we can stop some of those things. We're going to go a season and try and see how we do. And maybe we'll next year at this time, we'll ask for your response. We'll be reaching out to you. That, 
think they're going to be the black top and they'll have a larger top. So there'll be a dumpster by the pool for a majority of your season. We even talked about maybe moving our dumpster down there as an option too, just because it would help you guys and help you and helps us. Their discussion for the little leagues. Thank you all for coming tonight. Obviously, enjoy having you guys in the parks. That's uh, what we're about, bringing people in to use the facilities, and you guys play a huge role in that. So, for the time you do doing that. This has probably been the best group, too, to work with. <laughs> I mean, seriously, we <laughs> communicate well. We're all going towards the same initiatives, and I just I really appreciate that um, because I've seen what it's like when that doesn't happen. So I really appreciate you guys, and you guys are all volunteers, and, you know, that's, that's an awesome thing, too. Let's move on. Uh, board vacancy, do we have anything? Uh, just simply, I just wanted to. <laughs> we have any comments from the public on this? Has, it, has this person signed in? To Your speak? name and address. <laughs> Do we need to swear him in first? Nine North Wayne Street, Danville, Indiana. Uh, town manager. Um, I did put out applications uh, or a notice for applications to fill your vacant seat for a Democrat. I received one application that they wanted both Park Board and Plant Commission, which under the uh, Attorney General's ruling on dual lucrative positions, they cannot hold both. Um, this is a council president decision. I will be approaching him tomorrow with the name of the person, and it'll be his decision whether he puts them on Park Board or Plant Commission. If he chooses to put them on plan, um, our, our objective then under a, um, an Indiana statute, uh, we can start seeking Republicans uh, to fill the position if no Democrats put in for it in the time frame that we have. And we gave two weeks' notice. We gave them until last Friday. And, and again, we only received one application. So um, I know you have one Republican uh, that's shown interest in the position. Um, I'll check with uh, President Pato, see if he's interested in opening it up again or if he wants to just uh, put that person on the board. So that's where we sit. Um, the Democrat is Sue Rempert. I don't know if you know Sue. She's a lawyer that lives on Washington Street. And the Republican that put in for it was um, Dave Glover. So that's all I got. So that's all the news that is the news. And I can't remember the rest of the laugh in thing. I'm sorry. But, and none of you probably know what that means. I'm showing my yes, age. Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I guess I should say I'll entertain any questions. <clears throat> any questions for? No questions. I apologize. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, update on the conference. Well, you guys are free to leave if you want to. Too. <laughs> don't feel like you have to stay. <laughs> Pretty exciting. I don't know. <laughs> um, for uh, I have. Every year I have, whenever we go to a conference, I try to have uh, the staff write up a little bit about their experience. 
Um, I gave Kent a little folder there that just has all four of our um, write-up summaries in there, just things that we learned and stuff through the week. If you want to pass them around, if you guys have any questions, feel free to. Um, but it was a great week, a couple of days. <laughs> we did learn some things, and we have some things that we want to bring back, um, some social media stuff, and we had some some leadership stuff, too, I think was really important. We had some networking. Um, I did get a chance to talk to Context about our trails plan, which I think will be really cool. So I'm going to meet with him sometime in the next couple of weeks and, and start hashing out those details and what that's going to cost. But, yeah, it was, it was a pretty good conference all in all. On to the next item, uh, elections. <laughs> Do the elections? Yeah. Have a full board. Yep. <laughs> Looks like we got all the seats up there. <laughs> 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 Who's going to nominate first? <laughs> Let's do president first, I guess. Nations for president. I nominate Ken Elliott. Boy, all in first and second. <laughs> all in favor, say aye. Aye. Vice President. Nominate Tammy as Vice President. Look <laughs> at that. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Aries, Vice President. I nominated Elizabeth as Secretary. Second that motion. In favor signify by saying aye. 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 I didn't second it. I, I second it and I also vote for it. <laughs> right. Sounds like we've got president and vice president. <laughs> <laughs> What'd he mumble? What'd you mumble? Our meeting dates. Everybody reviewed those. Yeah. Comments, questions. Uh, like I said in previous, uh, for personal reasons, Tuesdays are not good for me. So it would be great if we could move it from Tuesday, but if not, if it, I know it can't be earlier on Tuesday because the tree advisory is before us. Well, what options do we have? Any? Up to you guys, really. I know there's a lot of moving around because of the council meeting, but really Mondays opened up, kind of, in there. If you wanted to move to a Monday, it's an option. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm pretty much available on any of them. Yeah, there's a lot of holidays on Monday, but we can bump them to Tuesdays then. But, I mean, it's really up to you guys. It doesn't matter to me. Um, if you did Mondays, we could do earlier if you needed to. We could do a little bit earlier, like we could go 6 o'clock if you wanted to. Um, and I'll just push that advisory, tree advisory to go. Sure. <laughs> I just have to be out of here by 7 on Tuesdays. So on the days that we're running a little long, it would be hard. Moving it up six or to Monday. We can make Monday as late as we need. I, Monday's totally open to me. Yeah. We can make it opposite Monday. <laughs> you know, nothing is probably for Monday. Town Council's right. Right. Yeah, okay. I think. I'm trying to think, of what was on Monday? 
I think there was a planning commission on Monday, but I think it's the second or third Monday. So if we push it back to fourth, we anything. <laughs> It's up to you guys. I make a motion to move our meetings to Monday. Uh, I, I'm open to time. You want to make them 6, 6.30? Is it the fourth Monday? Fourth Monday. Whatever you think is the yeah, most I think that open. Would be the best. So I make a motion to move it to the fourth Monday of the month at, oh, it's a good time, 6. Does it work better earlier for everybody? It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> well then, <laughs> he said yes. Good with all the above. He's a salesman. He makes his own hours. <laughs> so, do we want to try and make it five thirty or five? Is that too early? I think six is a good time. Okay. So the motion is the fourth Monday Less at six. So I was going to have I you second. guys sign something, but we'll do that. <laughs> Aye. 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 So we'll do an updated one for us. Yeah, I'll update that. The next one's March 23rd. What did you say? Yeah. Oh, that's spring. <laughs> I'll be gone too. <laughs> Starting in April. <laughs> Starting in April. If that's yeah. Let's start it in April. Let's okay. I make a motion to start it in April. We're staying at the third Tuesday. The fourth Monday, a third Tuesday of what are we? What are we? We're the second Tuesdays of the month, normally. March tenth. March tenth is oh, when it'll okay. be. Yeah. You okay with that? Yeah. We want to move March 10th up to 6 to help. Yeah, that's fine. Time frame. That, that, that's fine. Have is the Blanton House rates. So um, we talked about this, I think, in December mm -hmm. about some options with the Blanton House so that we can, you know, try to get as much capacity out of it as we can. So Stan, Bill, and I sat down and we came up with some options, and then I kind of like let them, you know, what would you want to do? And so this is where they kind of came up with was a proposal to discount weekends for the wedding packages by 50% within 90 days during the high season and regular season, um, which includes weekdays and off season rates. And then the disc, the discount would reduce the amount of minimum hours as well. Cause we tend to not get anyone to book within 90 days just because, I mean, it's a wedding. Usually that's a, a rarity. So what we're trying to increase is the normal person's rental. So uh, make it a little bit more affordable for someone who want to have a birthday party or just wanted to have a family reunion or something there. Mm -hmm. And then we can actually market these fees too, which is we've haven't we haven't really had that opportunity before. Say hey, we have a discount because we've never really discounted. Um, the goal would be to ask you guys to pass it tonight, and then um, hopefully the first meeting in March would be to have a change in the salary, or, or not the salary ordinance, but the 
fee structure to uh, allow for this to happen. Um, so you need a motion? I make a motion to to uh, offer a proposal and discount and to alter the fee structure for Blanton House. As, as it's written? As it's written, yes. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries. Bill, thanks, you guys. <laughs> He's been working on that for a while. Well, fill it. Get it used. Get it used. And I know. Right. Book it, right? Yeah. <laughs> the next is the Boston Gym Rates. Um, so we've almost been through our basketball season. I was kind of hoping basketball would be here, but uh, this is what we're looking to change is to, you know, how we talked about we want to have open gym possibilities all the time. So what we're looking to do is, you know, part of this is we're changing the fee structure so that, we pretty much bumped it up to rent half the gym or rent the whole gym is really now half the gym because our rates were really, really low. Um, so we were just trying to get even there. And then we were also given the opportunity that if you rented the full gym, it would be more expensive to rent the whole gym. Um, and so a lot of this is just kind of mimicking that. With the, the uh, junior basketball, were taking their full court use, cutting it into half court use, but then giving them more time. So they still have the same amount of practice time, just in a, or actually they have more practice time in a smaller space. So they can still get, because they usually do dual practice. You know, they have a team on one side, a team on the other side. Sometimes they'll scrimmage, but they can go uh, north south now too. So the goal is to open up the one side so that we have open gym all the time. And this is that step towards that. We could have done this before, but we didn't really have the option to rent half of it because we always have everybody always has full gym right now. And we think this is some will answer some of those questions. Questions? Who is the president of youth basketball? I don't know who the president of. It was one of the. Yeah, I think Samantha is. But it was Chris at one time, and then we'd been working with Brittany at one time, too. But I met with her in the early season, but I didn't ask her what her title was or anything. But I think it is Samantha did. And she's been pretty good to work with for the most part. We tried to get them into Hargrave, you know, when we did the upgrade and stuff, but they just didn't want to pay to, to use it, so... So I'm looking for a motion for this one, too. <laughs> I make a motion to approve the new rates as posted for Bostic Gym. I second. Favor? Aye. Aye. Carries. Old business and a theater update. Okay, this one gets tricky. So Kent has the uh, some of the quotes. So it came in way higher like double the quotes did from what we thought it was going to be. From the architects? Yeah, estimates. from his drawing. It was supposed to come in at like 150 and it ended up coming in at like 225, I think. Is what it was. A lot of it's the masonry, but really the electrical came in double, <laughs> the foundation came in double, and the masonry really came even more than double, but we got two estimates on the masonry. So I guess I, I'm kind of questioning, you know, do we spend $225,000 on that facility? We, we need to be all in if we are, but that's a lot of money. Should we look at, should I go to Scott and be like, hey, look, can we phase this in as an option, you know, to where we could do the foundation electrical and structure and it still looks like an amphitheater? Because it'll have the top, it'll just have I-beam poles. And then we come back in and we put the brick in later. Because the brick is really the most expensive thing. It's more than the structure, which is crazy. Because I really like the amphitheater. You know, when I first got that, I had like some shock. You can ask Eric, because he was right by me when I got it. And I was like almost tearing up, <laughs> you know, because we put so much work into this. 
I thought he was joking. <laughs> yeah, I was. And so originally I was thinking, well, maybe we look back at the polygon, you know, because that's where we started. But when I looked at the polygon, it was pretty much the same price. So why not get what we what we want if we're going to spend that money? And we have the money. I mean, if you look if you look at our non-reverting, we have like plenty of money to do it. Um, it's just, can I think of a hundred other things that I would do with that? That's the hard part. But if we do look at this, like we said, as a signature piece, then we should probably just move forward. Because we don't have a lot of other projects coming as far as that goes. Um, we've got the front sign, but most of that, the dollars are already secured. The DAC is going to require some dollars. But we're still not going to go under that $100,000 threshold that we wanted to have in there as kind of like a rainy day operating. So I think it's something where let me try to meander and, and work some of them down, but we are going to have to go to bid. So, you know, that's unfortunate, too, because I thought we would be under the $150,000 threshold and then we would be fine. So when we go to bid... Who knows what can come out of that? Uh, my goal would be to ask the people who already submitted to to submit. Um, and I think the structure, we almost, structure, I don't think we can really go anywhere else because we're having it kind of custom by them. But some of the, the trades. Sorry. Go ahead. How long does the bid process take? It can be a month. Okay. Maybe. I mean, it could be short. It doesn't have to be. We just have to advertise, and then we have to give them a window. We'll do like a construction meeting, they ask questions. We already have the plans. I don't know, what are your thoughts? So these numbers were, you basically just quoted these out? Yeah. Because I had to find out where we were, because I don't have, I mean, Scott said, hey, it'll be around 150. And then it came in as this, and part of it, I think, is because of the current construction market. You know, yeah. I'm getting everybody, hey, maybe we'll do it. It's a small project. <laughs> you know, if we inflate it, maybe we'll get it. I think the bid may cut that down or may inflate it. But Mason's right now. Yeah. I know. And good ones. Both of those had names behind them. Um, that may be the dollars. I have one or two other. You do? Others that you might. Uh, but with, I think it, with it being two. 225 for the whole project you're on. Did it. Yep. Public did it. So. And I figure we would just go after whoever we would want. But I think I want to go back to Scott a little bit and be like, okay, if we piecemeal this, if we, you know, if we wanted to slim it up, maybe we don't do the back wall, like what's his name said. I mean, that could probably save us $50,000. You know, and then we're real close to where we need to be, but we're still at the bid, but. You know, maybe we put that in the bid as options of, you know, hey, no back wall or back wall. There's some options they have out there. I would like to keep moving forward. It scares me a little bit to spend this kind of money, though, on something that we only use six times or so. But it may not be used six times. Once we get it in there, it may be used 30 or 40 because it's almost like a giant shelter, too. So, I mean, that's the hope. Yes. That's the vision. It just frustrates me that so many things came back that way. I know. It's like somebody saying, here, I'll sell you this car for a thousand bucks. I'm going to time to sign the line. It's 10,000. It's like, no. It's super frustrating. <laughs> well, I want to keep moving forward. You said you have some masonry people that. Yeah, I'll, I can see. What do you need from us? I, I just wanted your blessing to move forward more than anything. And then from here, I'll go and start preparing some documents and stuff. And I might reach out to Kent just a little bit for some wisdom on that and uh, start pushing forward. But I'm going to request from the council to, to move forward with it as well. Well, you have my blessing. Good. All right. Front sign. Um, that was pretty good. It's moving along. So we have that. Uh, I'm waiting on an asphalt bid, actually, for that front lot. But I see that one moving forward pretty quick, and we don't have to worry about the bidding. 
sign guys are ready. I'm supposed to meet with them next week. Start working on time. I was hoping to have the the amphitheater project wrapped up by now. <laughs> so it's going to add a, a, probably an extra month. Probably not this year, but it could be a blessing, though, because then we can focus on that signature next year, a signature event like we talked about. But we will probably start working on some of it. If we, if we do end up saying go in the next month, we could put the metal structure together, you know, where it is. We're just going to have to... So we have those two concerts, so we just need to think about how we do that. And I also was approached about possibly bringing the symphony back. Yeah, so. Oh, now they want to come back. <laughs> so, I mean, it could be a great thing. It could be. Um, and if we get possible sponsors that we're thinking about, too, maybe it's a chance to where, hey, put your name on that building and give us the dollars that follow. You know, you can have it for so long or something. So maybe it does perk us up a little bit as opportunity. I'm also going to look at some grants because we have, this is probably one of the only projects where we actually have matching dollars. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to look at that and see if, if there's anything that will be a fast grant go where maybe we can nip away a little bit at it. Maybe even look at the community foundation and some of that stuff too. Uh, reports year to date uh, financials are in front of you no surprises really um, starting out the year I'm still uh, check for so you, if you saw our non-reverting bottom line. Uh, yeah, nothing really crazy. It's just a lot of these items I haven't even spent out of yet. It's maintenance and salaries with a little bit of DAC in there. In there. Uh, side note, I didn't put it on. Getting a little deeper in that DAC process. Had three contractors. Had one big. We pretty much did like small, medium, large companies to try to see where we are because we really have to get the number to find out. You know, are we big enough project to where? Um. And so we have uh, McGovern coming in and looking at stuff, which it'd be a good local tie to have. We have T and W. So they're a, a larger company, and after walking them through, they were, they were more like we'd rather be your project manager services, but without numbers, I don't know. we're just gonna wait until those that first estimate comes in, kind of like this, and now we know where we are, where we're playing. But a lot of it seems really promising as far as not having too many major things. We will have to get a state permit because we're um, moving the bathroom facilities to try to help. Most of the other stuff's cosmetic. Bunch of small periods of closing sections. <laughs> it's pretty much what we have to do to kind of do it. Not. But we're excited, and I know we that's a project we've been working on for a long time. It's starting to get. Questions? Anything else? Uh, thank you for the opportunity to go to IPRA. We always appreciate that. It's, it's great for us. It's a little bit of team building. Also, we spend time and get to have super beneficial. We got to see a lot of stuff that we can. <laughs> you guys remember from the NRPA last year? Uh, there's a lot of cool playground stuff, and we've we've been looking at. You know, I know we've been talking about the playscape, future playscape, and there's there's some good opportunities, some stuff that mimics playscape. 
but still is a little bit more. That's that 22, 23. Okay. Make a motion to adjourn. Have your second. I'm out. All in favor? Aye. Adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Good job, guys.